Running effective meetings. As a community group, it's important to be able to run effective meetings. This could include regular committee meetings and annual general meetings with your members. And how to run both these meetings will usually be set out in your constitution or set of rules. Also, any other meetings within your group, for example, planning meetings or with external organisations, for example, funders or partners. The list of points to be discussed at a meeting is called an agenda. Usually the person responsible for organising the meeting will make up the agenda, but it's good practice to ask other people attending if they have anything they want to put on the agenda for discussion. So let's think what should be on an agenda. Your agenda should include name and date of the meeting at the top, present apologies, this is who is attending and who has said that they can't come, minutes from the last meeting, this is when everyone looks at the notes from the last meeting and checks that they are correct. Matters arising. Is there anything in the minutes from the last meeting that won't be discussed in the main agenda? If so, then give people the chance to raise it here. After the matters arising come the main items for discussion. This could be one agenda item or several. This is then followed by the financial report. If it's a committee meeting, the treasurer should give an up-to-date financial report any other competent business. This is an opportunity for people to raise anything that hasn't been covered in the meeting. And then to finish off, date of next meeting. Agree when you'll next meet. Make sure that someone takes notes of the meeting. These are called minutes and are usually taken by the secretary of your organisation. They're an important record to help everyone to remember what was agreed and are good for people who weren't able to attend. It's also important to note that funders may also ask to see minutes of your committee meeting or of your annual general meeting. So how do you take good minutes? You don't have to note down everything that is said, but make sure to note down any decisions made or actions agreed, as well as who is going to do them. If you're using an agenda, you can usually use the agenda as a template and make notes under each item. It's a good idea to write up the minutes soon after the meeting while the meeting is still fresh in your mind and to send the minutes to everyone who was invited to the meeting, including those who were unable to attend. An annual general meeting is a meeting of your members which takes place every year. Your constitution will set out how your annual general meeting is to be carried out. Your AGM is about presenting your annual report, your annual accounts and electing your committee. And it's good practice to ask someone independent to chair the election. Very simply, your AGM is an opportunity to celebrate the achievements of your organisation, to tell your members and partners about everything you're doing and to give your members a chance to ask questions. Usually you have to advertise your AGM publicly and invite all your members two or three weeks before the meeting takes place. You'll find the exact details of this in your constitution. You should also invite your staff, volunteers, supporters, funders and partner organisations but if you have a range of people there, make sure that you know who is able to vote. You may wish to serve food and refreshments, and some organisations also use their AGM to consult their members. For example, you could ask members about their needs or ask for their help to plan for the coming year. So let's think about what's on an AGM agenda. Similar to your committee meetings, you should have the name and date of the meeting at the top followed by welcome and introductions, including present and apologies, then minutes from your last AGM and any matters arising, followed by your annual report. This is usually given by your chair, but there may be other people in the organisation who can present your annual report. You can give a presentation, you could show photos, or you could just simply talk about your achievements over the year and answer any questions. Your treasurer will then give a report of the annual accounts, talking through key points and answering any questions. The next stage is the election of the committee. And at this point, the current committee will step down and an independent person should chair the election of the new committee. Election procedures should be detailed in your constitution. And all that's left to do now is to set the date of your next committee meeting. Meetings are often about making decisions. Making decisions as a group is different from making decisions as an individual, as there are a range of different views to consider. 
When you're making decisions as a group, make sure that you're acting in the best interest of your organisation and your community and that you make your decisions fairly and democratically. You should also be aware of the number of people that you need to be present to make a decision. This is called quorum. Details of the number of people you need to make a decision, the quorum, is usually in your governing document. There are also different levels of decision. At your annual general meeting, the decisions are made by your members. For example, electing your committee, at committee meetings, the decisions are made by committee members. And then there are decisions made in between meetings by staff, committee members and volunteers. It's important to remember that all committee members are responsible for decisions made by the organisation. Let's look at other things that can affect decision making. A conflict of interest is when a person on the committee has a personal interest as well as the interests of the organisation. In this case, the person must tell everyone about their personal interest so that the committee can then decide whether that person should be involved in the decision making or not. It's good practice to have a conflicts of interest policy and or procedure which sets out what people should do in this situation. So please see our fact sheet for more information. Conflict within your group can also affect your decision making. It's good to consider how do you manage and resolve conflict. Conflict isn't necessarily always a bad thing. It's good that people are able to express different opinions and good decision making will take into account a range of views. But if the conflict becomes so much that it's affecting how well your group can function or deliver the activities, then it will need to be addressed.